Hello everyone, welcome to Good Film Hunting, a podcast about an average couple who are on the hunt for some good movies. In today's world, we are consuming more media than ever, perhaps more passively than ever. But we believe that by documenting and discussing the media we intake, how and what we intake will change for the better. It is important that we don't just become another consumer, but a participant, seeking to engage with the media we consume, so that we can see how our view of the world affects how we perceive it, and how it affects how we perceive the world. In this podcast, we are not only on the hunt for some good movies, but on the hunt for a good discussion. So, lean in, participate, and enjoy. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm tired. Yeah. It is 9.30 after all. It is 9.30 after all. So we'll, we'll try to keep this one, you know, not too long. Unless you get carried away because this is your favorite movie after It's all. not my favorite movie. It's up there with your favorite mm. movies. It's my one Top of my five. most watched movies. One of your most watched movies. What would be your favorite movie then? I don't know. It's like asking me what my favorite book is. I don't have a favorite. I feel like that's a poor analogy but <laughs> no it's hard to pick a favorite okay all right well good evening everyone um we're talking about uh you've got mail tonight i'm waving towards like the audience that's sitting <clears throat> in front of us that's not there the audience that's sitting in the laundry basket yeah the floor. hi hello how's it going over there um but james here as always and besides me is my lovely wife savannah um, we're talking about You've Got Mail. Do you've got mail? I do. You do? <clears throat> we yeah. don't ever, like, ever get good mail. It's just... Sometimes we do. I feel like we have, we have really long stretches where we're all, we only get junk, and then sometimes we'll get, like, all the good mail at once. All the good mail. Do you wish you got as much good mail as these people get? I'm really glad I don't have a correspondent that I talk to. Oh, uh, okay. Like, back when we were dating, that's kind of what it was like. Yeah. Which was good because we were dating, it's but true. like I would not want to write that much now. Yeah. yeah. Well, see what I write to. No, I don't know. You're the only one I need to communicate with that much. <laughs> Is it? Mm -hmm. I guess so. Yeah, I guess these people technically had their correspondence that they were in love with, but never met, but also mm -hmm. their significant other. significant other, which is kind of sus. Kind of sus, just a little bit. Um, so, we're going to dissect this movie a little bit, talk about our thoughts and feelings. I'm going to share some interesting facts. We're going to share our favorite moment. Then we'll go through our rating system. We'll break it down into four categories that we'll rate on a scale of one to five. And then we'll just, you know, give our overall recommendation, not recommendation, and then move on to our next movie at some other point that's not as late as this, obviously. That's and true. who knows what that'll be. I don't know. It could be a surprise. It could be. Could be. Um, so, you've got mail. I've got some, got some facts for you. Are you ready for some facts about you've got mail? Some like facts. Like facts, like the the machine, which is kind of like mail. It's like email a little bit. So yeah, I'm not. Facts is kind of not a thing anymore. It's true. It's primarily like doctor things, right? Yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about facts. <laughs> Um, all right, you've got mail. Let's go into this list of facts. So, it was distributed by Warner Brothers, released, guess. Oh, big Wait, one. what year? Day and year. Uh, it was released in October of 1999. Uh, somewhat close. <clears throat> I don't know. December 18th, 1998. Oh, okay. I thought it was 1999 for some reason. Did you? No. What was the... Oh, I guess we haven't watched anything from 1999. Um, as a runtime of 119 minutes, it had a budget of... $25 million. No, a bit higher. $38 million. bit higher. $42 million. A little more. $48 million. A bit more. $55 million. Even more. $60 million. So close. Sixty-two million. Sixty-three. Yeah. Sixty-four. Yeah. Sixty-five. Yes. Oh wow, good that's job. A big budget. Sixty-five million. That's for a pretty big com. budget. You think so? Um, at a box office of two hundred 
50.8 million, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, the opening weekend, it held its number one, held number one spot at the box office, right before another movie that was released about the same time. Want to guess what that was? No, I have no idea. Uh, Prince of Egypt. Oh. Which I thought was interesting. That came out in the 90s? 98? Yeah, 1998. Wow. Yeah. Um, the film was directed by Nora Ephron, who um, also directed Sleepless in Seattle and wrote numerous rom-coms, including When Harry Met Sally. Huh. So, so apparently that's kind of her thing. Uh, she died in 2012 of... My, you might need help me read that Where? word. Maya, Maya, Le... myelodysplasia. I have no, what in the world is myelodysplasia? Plasia? What is that? I don't know. I think it's something to do with. Well, <laughs> we're gonna take a little detour from you've got mail and figure out what this illness is. I know. Like, why would you even include that if you didn't Google it? I thought I did. A type of rare right. blood cancer where you don't have enough healthy blood cells. Well, that's just sad. I know. How do you pronounce it? How to pronounce? I meant to look this up beforehand, but I it kind of slipped my mind. Oh. I promise I will do that next time. This comes. Myelodysplasia. 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 Myelodys. <laughs> Myelodysplasia. Okay, so that's what she died from in 2012. <laughs> so sad. Sad. Wasn't that long ago, all things considered. Um, the film was written by Nora herself and her sister Delia, which I thought was interesting. Apparently, there's a lot of Efrons in the entertainment, entertainment industry. industry. So this, this, is it spelled the same? Yeah, yeah. It was it was the same. It was spelled the same last name. I looked it up. Are they related? Um, they are related, yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. I meant, uh, I thought you meant like you were talking about Zac Efron. No, no. I said... No, no, that's a different Efron. Okay. Def different Efron, not even... No, okay. no I know, because no. I thought you meant there's a lot of Efrons in the entry. No, no, I meant specifically related to Nora and Delia. They have several other siblings oh, okay. who are in the entertainment industry. Oh. That's what I meant. Um, the film obviously stars Tom Hanks as Joe Fox, Meg Ryan as Kathleen Kelly, Parker Posey as Patricia Eden, and Gene Stapleton as Birdie. Uh, the movie, as we know, is based off the an older movie called Shop Around the Corner, which we did watch and we'll probably be referencing a bit, um, which was actually inspired from the 1937 Hungarian play um, Parfu Parfumeri by Mikolos Lazio. And it had been earlier adapted into the Shop Around the Corner. And then 1949 it had been adopted into... Uh, another movie called In the Good Old Summertime. So, apparently this play was popular enough that several movies oh, have wow. been based off of it. When was The Shop Around the Corner? When was that made? Um, that was 1940, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Jimmy Stewart, Margaret Sullivan. I've never heard of Margaret Sullivan otherwise. The name sounds kind of familiar. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, another obvious influence for You've Got Mail was Pride and Prejudice, which they obviously make a lot of references to. It's, it's a little on the nose. They don't. They ironically don't make any references to it at all in the shop around the corner. Uh, well, that's probably because that was not inspired by Pride and Prejudice. That's true. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously some Pride and Prejudice happening, Maybe. but yeah. it wasn't quite inspired in the same way. Um, the score was done by the English composer George Fenton. I didn't really recognize anything he's done before. Um, the film itself does not appear to have any significant awards. Um, a small little goof, though, is when Joe Fox picks up the book Kathleen has brought at the cafe and says, Pride and Prejudice, I bet you just love this book. It is actually a cover of Jane Austen's Persuasion. Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> Minor, minor gripe. Um, so yeah, those are those are all the facts I had. Not not a whole lot, but interesting. I didn't realize You've Got Mail was kind of in a lineage of other films that were inspired by yeah. a play, a Hungarian play, nonetheless. Yeah. Um, so, Savannah, you have a history with this movie and your thoughts about this movie. Would you care to share them? Um, I don't remember the first time I saw this movie. It was probably... Maybe 2016. 2016? 
2015, maybe. Okay. We went through a time where we watched a ton of 90s rom-coms as a family. Yeah. Filtered. Filtered. Obviously. Mm. I think we filtered, we filtered most of them. But anyway, this was one of them. That you filtered. With, that we watched. watched. Oh, okay. This one doesn't need to be filtered. I think uh, we did filter it, but it doesn't really need to be. Yeah. Um, this one, along with several others, including Titanic. That's no not a rom com. <laughs> it's a rom drom. Uh, Titanic, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Sweet Home Alabama. I do have a history with this movie. Oh. The first time I saw it, I believe my father watched it with me. He and I oh, stayed up late watching it. Mm. My father. Your father, yes. We watched it together. I think that was the first time I saw it. Oh, it's fun. It's good. I've always enjoyed it mm -hmm. because it's just fun. I liked the chemistry between the two main characters. Mm -hmm. It's just a fun story. Just a fun story. Had you seen it? Well, I know you watched it again sometime last year. I For think the first time in a while, had you seen it in between? Probably. I think this was probably my fifth watch. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah, so I've watched it like almost annually. Okay. Maybe since I no well I don't know whatever okay. I've watched it like multiple times. times. Yeah, I mean, do you have any more thoughts about like general thoughts about the movie as far as where it stands? Um, your... I mean, it's a movie I've always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I think it's like a cinematic masterpiece, but like the story always gets me. It's warm and fuzzy at the end, and the end always makes me like want to cry tears of happy. Oh, does it? Happy feelings. Oh, that's sweet. So. I just, it's a good movie. It's a feel-good movie for me. Yeah. Um, I, I think I definitely heard about this from the first time from you. Um, I think, yeah, you told me the story about your dad and you watching it when we were dating. Um, and you kept mentioning you wanted to see it. And then you watched it um, last year and mentioned you wanted to watch it with me. But we just didn't get around to it because it wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily available. Um... And then I decided we should just buy it since you like it so much. And we'll, we'll have it in our collection mm -hmm. of movies we visit somewhat regularly. Um, as far as what I thought right off the bat, I, I enjoyed it. I can't say I had really any set expectations for it. Um, yeah, I, I think going into it with little to no expectations helped me enjoy it a lot more. Mm. Um, I thought it was pleasant. I thought it was cute. I thought it wasn't anything like spectacular but mm -hmm. um i think kind of it'll be fun to kind of compare and contrast it to the shop around the corner yeah having watched that now mm -hmm. um yeah i i thought it was i thought it was pretty good i i would definitely watch it again especially with you especially with me and i feel like it would, we'd just enjoy it more as time goes on mm -hmm. yeah um, did you ha do you have a uh, favorite moment of the movie? I mean, you kind of mentioned the ending getting you, but is that your favorite moment? Mm. Yeah, I think my favorite part of the movie is just the end where they're starting to get to know each other better and stuff, and they like, mm -hmm. start to like each other. And when Joe has this project. Yeah, yeah, that part, yeah. I like that part. I, f I feel like the last 30 minutes of the movie is the best part. Okay. Yeah. My favorite scene was probably the cafe scene. Um, or not, the, the part leading right up to it where Joe is very nervous to meet oh, Kathleen yes. for the first time and he's with his friend and he's making his friend go up there and he's like making comments about this person who he's never met before. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was probably my favorite moment of it. Um, and in the shop around the corner, that scene was funny, too. It was. It was almost beat for beat the same scene. Mm -hmm. Obviously, different characters in the setting. Did they say in the shop around the corner, did he say anything about her looking as even as good as a mailbox? How she had, he'd have to marry her? Oh, I don't remember. Because that was they said that in the, the newer version, the 90s version. Uh, I don't remember that. Oh. They might have. If she even turns out to be as good looking as a mailbox... <laughs> I'm going to have to drop everything and marry her. Wow. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, no, I don't I don't remember if that was it. That sounds like something Jimmy Stewart would say, though. I know. <laughs> Who we've determined is the Tom Hanks of the early 1900s. Mid-1900s. <laughs> Mid-1900s, sorry. My bad. Um, okay. 
So let's go into our uh, our rating system here. We've got four categories we'll rate the movie on. Entertainment, quality, writing, and content. Uh, we'll rate it on a scale of one to five. And that will kind of, we'll compare those ratings at the end, what they add up to, and see if that's where we would actually, that's what we'd rate the movie with um, based on our, just our personal preference and kind of whether we'd recommend it based off that rating. So um, starting with entertainment, and you, Savannah, what would you give this for entertainment, and why? Um, I'd probably give it a four and a half. A four and a half? Yeah. Okay. It's fun. It's <clears throat> a rom-com, so it's kind of... There's some fun romantic tension and stuff, but it's yeah. just a good... It's a, it's a very entertaining story. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are some comedic moments, too. Yeah. And I feel like... I mean, it's hard to tell, because I have seen this movie so many times, so, mm. like... I'm not, like, hanging on to every word because it's, like, my first or second time yeah, seeing it. Okay. But, yeah, I'd say four and a half. Okay. I would probably give it a four. I thought it was, like I said, going into it, no expectations kind of helped. I think watching it with you was fun. It definitely had its fair share of moments that were like, oh, that was a little cheesy. Yeah. Um, whether it was writing or just things happening. Um, yeah, I thought it was paced pretty well. I thought it was well done overall. I think the characters were fun. Um, there was a lot of... The dialogue in it, I thought, for the most part, was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty witty, mm -hmm. um, which I enjoy. Um, Tom Hanks and Kathleen's character, uh, Meg Ryan... Or, no, Meg Ryan's character, Kathleen. <laughs> Sleep. Um, it was fun to see them go back and forth. Um, I think... And this will go into writing a bit more. The things that kind of just held it back for me was it obviously being predictable, but I felt like it wasn't quite, there wasn't quite enough uniqueness to it for me mm -hmm. to feel like I was okay with it being such a cookie cutter story. Yeah. Because like Pride and Prejudice, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that Kathleen's character wasn't likable mm -hmm. very much, even towards the end, which will go more into writing. Mm -hmm. I just never connected with her character as much yeah. as I did with um, Joe. Um, I felt that way with Chopper on the Corner, too. Yeah. I thought there was just a couple other conveniences that kind of just happened, which was like kind of like, ugh. Um, and I think the... Oh, what was I going to say? There was one more, one more aspect about it that... Um, oh, what was it? Not the character, it was... Oh, the, the whole email bit. Mm -hmm. I, I just, that's so hard to capture, I think, without making it awkward. And I think they did a decent job, but there were definitely... Like reading emails? Reading emails and writing emails mm -hmm. to each other. There were definitely just a couple moments where it just kind of felt awkward to watch them do it. But I didn't think they did a bad job overall, but it was definitely like, yeah, this is kind of, we're just... There's not enough going on here for me to feel like engrossed in the fact that I'm watching them sit at a computer going mm -hmm. chick, 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 chick. But But I mean even if they were sitting down and writing letters, it would be boring too. It's true, yeah. Probably even more boring, honestly. It's true. But yeah, I feel like there there could have been a little more creativity there, but I mean that's a minor a minor mm -hmm. break. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So a uh, four a solid four is where I will land and land. Happily. Um, where would you, what would you give this for quality? Um, I honestly think it's pretty well done. Mm -hmm. Again, 90s. So like, you know. Yeah. But I thought, like, I like, <laughs> I like the soundtrack. It's jaunty. Jaunty. The, not the score, but the, the soundtrack, the soundtrack, right? I think okay. Like the songs. The songs, yeah. yeah. Okay. The score I didn't pay attention to, really. I don't think. Okay, no, um, yeah, I would say... Also four and a half. Four and a half? Okay. Yeah, good. It's, it's good. It's, I'm trying to think of many. There aren't tons of flaws. I like the costumes a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think that the set design was good. Mm -hmm. It felt very real world. Yeah. And I do really like New York. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know where in New York that is. Mm, I do yeah, like, I do like that a lot when movies have that. It gives me a very cozy, does it? like nostalgic vibe. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, so four and a half. Okay. I would, I would give this another solid four. I, th I thought it looked, it's from a cinematography standpoint, it looked very crisp. Mm -hmm. looked very good. Like you said, the costumes were pretty good. Um, I really liked the vibes of the bookstores, mm -hmm. the settings yeah. that were taking place. The, the, um, there wasn't like a, I guess there was a bit of a contrast between like the homey store Kathleen was running versus the big mega bookstore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but. And Kathleen's bookstore too kind of gave me Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium vibes. Did it? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I, okay. Well, that's going into writing. I'll, I'll hold off on that. Um. I, the score didn't really notice anything particularly. Soundtrack, yeah, it was pretty fun. I, I do like the aesthetics of the characters and the costumes. I thought I, I that was probably my favorite part. Well, aside from the acting. Mm -hmm. um, I just... Kathleen, I liked, I liked her aesthetics, her kind of crazy short hair, but like yeah. she was always wearing something very derpy and mm -hmm. <laughs> not super fashionable. And then you have Tom Hanks, who's always very swag and... His suits. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that, uh, the, the business casual vibes that was going on with all the characters know, all the time. I wish I could dress like her all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was just, it was fun. It was a fun aesthetic that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, nothing about it stood out as being particularly um, amazing. Mm -hmm. This... I think it gets a four just because it is done well and done very well. It mm -hmm. just isn't necessarily kind of pushing over to like, wow, that was really good yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, four is where I'll mind it. There you go. What would you give this for writing? The overall script, dialogue, character, arcs? Mm, probably a four. Yeah. I feel like... I don't have many complaints, mm -hmm. but I feel like I f it was the whole side plot with with um, Joe's dad's girlfriend mm. was unnecessary and weird. Yeah. Like I don't feel like it did anything for the yeah, plot. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and it we didn't really understand what was going on. Like we had like these teasers that she was like trying to flirt with Joe because mm. like she kissed him on the lips one time. Mm -hmm. And, like, touched his leg. Yeah. But, like, she ended up running away with her nanny. Or one of the children's nanny. It was, yeah, it was weird. Yeah. So, like, we had no reason. Like, I feel like that could have totally not been in there. Yeah. I don't feel like it added anything. Yeah. It didn't take away well, from Maybe the they even, if it was there, but they gave it less attention almost. Because, like, I felt like it kind of expanded upon the dad character a bit. Yeah, because, like, but... Joe... Like, we saw a lot of scenes of Joe's life with his family, but, like, there was no reason to have the, the, the woman. And, mm, okay. Like, the kids could have existed without her. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Was there anything else about it? The writing? Yeah, we, that stands um, out. Good, bad. I think maybe, I feel like... The, re the relationships between the main characters and their significant others weren't super well fleshed out. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, they're expendable relationships that weren't going to last. So, mm, yeah. But yeah, those were my biggest two problems, I feel like. Okay. I would give this a three. Um, other, the other rom com we've reviewed on here was Groundhog Day, right? Mm hmm. And I gave that a four, I think, because it wasn't perfect. There were a couple things, especially towards the end, that were just kind of like, that kind of came together mm -hmm. too well, almost. Yeah. Conveniently. Um, but I thought, like, the writing did a lot of interesting things and really played with the idea of living the same life mm -hmm. or same day over and over and over again really mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, but I would give this one a three because I, I do see quite a few little things that just weren't done well and mm -hmm. I felt like they they could have maybe expanded upon the whole idea of not knowing somebody you're talking to but being in love with them mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, I didn't think they did a bad job mm -hmm. with that particular aspect. They definitely did a way better job than they did in the shop around the corner where that was almost non-existent and probably should not have existed. That's true. Which 
it's surprising that that influenced this movie. I know. Because literally the only thing that really stands out is the two characters, um, main characters, uh, head, constant headbutting, and then the cafe scene. Mm-hmm. But like, even at the end, like I just felt mm-hmm. like they deserve yeah. each other. <laughs> I was more interested in the, the business aspect of it mm-hmm. and all the employees. Um, but so I think they definitely did a much better job here. But yeah, I think I agree. The relationships between the main characters and their first romantic partners. It just mm-hmm. to me, I was asking the whole time, like, how did they even get in these relationships? I know. They have no chemistry, and these other two people are just kind of not great people I know, either. They're they kind are. of really annoying, actually. Yeah. Um. So I'm. That'd be the story I'd be interested in knowing, like, how that happened. Um, I felt that, like I said, I did not like Kathleen's character very much. Even by the end, I didn't like her. I liked her more than I did, like, the love interest in um, The Shop Around the Corner. But you... Clara? I, Clara? Is that her name? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, with a K. With a K, because it's somewhere in here. Was it? Was it Hungarian? Was it Hungarian? I guess it was. Um, Because we spent a lot, like you said, we spent a lot of time with Tom Hanks' character, Joe, with his family life, him just hanging out with the Mm -hmm. kids casually, you know, showing that, you know, he's he's a pretty decent guy. Mm -hmm. He loves, he's caring. Um, Even, you know, in his relationships with his dad's, or dad and um, grandfather. Um, And so they just put a lot of work in, investing us into mm-hmm. him but not a lot doing that with Kathleen and you made the point maybe it's because they were under the assumption we assumed she was in the right because she had the small little business mm-hmm. that was battling the big bookstore yeah. franchise thing yeah and like we were supposed to look at Kathleen like she's quirky and cute and stuff yeah. and like she was just kind of bratty and annoying yeah and she was she just wasn't super nice and was even like yeah she just was so quick to throw um Joe's character under the bus and the Fox bookstores under the bus at the moment she could. Mm-hmm. And I think the problem is is that um, I liked the Fox bookstore vibes. <laughs> better. And not better. I just liked it. And even they even have a scene where Kathleen realizes it's not as bad as she thought. Yeah, well I mean in she never her bookstore doesn't get saved. She yeah. leaves. And- yeah starts working on a children's book and, mm-hmm. like, decides that Joe's bookstore is fine. So, like... Yeah, but it's not like they ever, like, showed us a perspective of, like, ooh, I can see why Kathleen wouldn't like this. Like, they never showed us, a certain, like, only negative aspects, mm-hmm. but then, like, like a perspective shift halfway through. Like, yeah. maybe now she's seeing things she didn't realize. Mm-hmm. It just, to me, was always like, oh, that's a pretty fun, cool place. And, well, it's about time she realized it kind of deal. Yeah. Um... So, I felt like Tom Hanks' character, Joe, his character arc was very good. Mm -hmm. He had a very good character arc and very, you know, Mr. Darcy character arc, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But Kathleen, she just kind of was there being an egg the whole time and insisting she loved this guy she never met via Mm -hmm. email um, or only met via email and just this kind of dumb is, was kind of a dumb character trait, to yeah. be honest. And even from Joe's perspective, it was a bit dumb. But, like, I felt like his was a little more understandable just because his girlfriend was so annoying and mean. She was, <laughs> she was really weird. Yeah. I don't even know how they, like, that seemed, I feel like that was, like, the fashion back mm. then. Like, in a lot of rom-coms, it's, like, the kind of significant other that everyone ends up with. I'm like, really? how do you end up with someone like that? Yeah. Um, I felt like, I, speaking of well-written th- scenes, I really liked the elevator scene where they were all stuck. Mm-hmm. I felt like that was a really good moment where Joe realizes, like, oh, I really don't like this woman because he's listening to these other people talk about, if yeah, I ever get out of this elevator, I'm going to, you know, go see this family member or do this thing. And it's, you know, Tom Hanks has this revelation of, like, oh, what would I do? And then his girlfriend's over there, you know, screaming her head off because she's out of Tic Tacs. <laughs> Like, I know, and but I feel like there wasn't really a good arc with Kathleen and her boyfriend. Yeah, and that was going to be my gripe. Like, the, it was way too convenient. That it was just like, that. I don't love you anymore. Ha! Huh, 
Neither do I. It's like, oh, what a coincidence. Goodbye. That's, I don't know how you couldn't feel really sad about that. Yeah. It was just, it was kind of awkward and not super well done. Um, and was, I never got the sense that she even liked him ever no. in her life. I know. He was much more likable than Joe's girlfriend. It's true. But he was, he was a little annoying. prudish. He was, but still. Yeah. So yeah, I would give it a three. It was it was fine. It was serviceable. Um, not egregious, but there were enough things that I was kind of scratching my head over for mm -hmm. me to feel like it could move up. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, what would you give this for the content, you know, weighing the more negative content against the positive aspects of the story, negative being, you know, sexual content, crassness, language, et cetera? Um, probably a three. Okay. Yeah, because there's nothing, like, in the beginning they have that, like, random conversation in the bookstore. Oh, about crude. The, the cyber stuff. Yes. Cyber bleep. Bleep. Yes. Um, and that was crude. Mm-hmm. But then, like, throughout the rest of the movie, there's some language, I think. But yeah, I know, there's definitely some language. There's, like, that weird vibe with the mother or the girlfriend of the dad and stuff. And, like, yeah. it's a little sketch. But, like, nothing offensive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'd give it a three. You three is in, like, I wouldn't want, like... Like an older, I like a like ten-year-old would be fine kind of thing, maybe. Maybe. Or maybe not. Or maybe a little older, like 13. Oh, okay. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I think I was probably, like... 14 when I saw this movie, oh, okay. or 15 when I saw this movie for the first time. Gotcha. Um, just because it's a little crass, but nothing bad. Yeah. Pretty yeah. clean. Like, honestly, quite clean. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, sexual content. Mm -hmm. There's barely any kissing. No yeah. making out or anything. Mm. It's, like, just kind of, like, life. Yeah. Yeah. Life. Um, I would, I'd probably give this a four, I think. Um, had there been a bit more language, not that I'm asking for it to have more language, mm -hmm. had there been a bit more language or even a little more crassness, then I think it'd come down to a three, but it was, what was there was pretty mild mm -hmm. and there wasn't a lot of it too. So, yeah. um, like I, I kind of forget that was there almost to an extent, yeah. but yeah, it, there's enough of it there that younger kids mm -hmm. wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a kid movie for younger kids, definitely yeah. older kids, um. Yeah, and the whole cyber sex joke at the beginning wasn't super, wasn't necessary at all. Yeah. <laughs> it just was there. So, yeah, I think three, I and mean, then four is where I'd land. Going back to writing for a second, um, Birdie's character. Yeah, I was just going to say that. What was her deal with the being rich? Yeah, I don't really know. She That was kind of a weird side story that they, like, tried to include, like... She's wealthy. Yeah. She's wealthy because she was mm, in love with some important Royalty person in which country was it again? I don't remember. Was it Spain? Somewhere. Or, yeah. Maybe that's even Hungary. Weird. I don't remember. But that then segued into Kathleen and was it Fred? Was that her boyfriend? What was his uh, name? Frank. Frank. Their relationship mm -hmm. and him getting worked up about it because he's super passionate about politics. Oh, yeah. And that being how it led to the conversation. Like that. that was just weird. Yeah. That was a little bit of a stretch. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Wait, hold on. Give me your computer really fast. Yeah. Talk. I want to I Google Birdie's relationship because maybe it was with a Hungarian person and that would I wouldn't be like, surprised because that since that's based off of a. Yeah. While you do that, I'll, I want to talk about The Shop Around the Corner. So The Shop Around the Corner, um, we watched it just because, to our surprise, the, the disc came with the You've Got Mail. And I probably enjoyed that one, not equally, but just a little bit less than You've Got Mail. I thought the biggest strength of it were just the characters and the dialogue. It's I just love watching old movies, like really old movies, and seeing... Like, just how different they were in terms of production quality and how they go about acting and talking. And the writing in it wasn't super great. And the whole romantic side plot was almost, like, unnecessary and didn't add anything because we were more invested in the business that uh, Mr. Mount Mautishik, 
Mr. Mautichek was running and his drama with Jimmy's character um, because he thought Jimmy was dating or having a scandalous relationship with Mr. Mautichek's wife. And then the the ending of the business kind of having a massive sale at Christmas Eve, which raises Mr. Malachick's spirits after he tries to commit suicide. Um, so yeah, that was that felt more of the plot than the romantic relationship. And I just wish that maybe with that one, instead of it being this weird thing where they're writing letters and talking about how great they are, or um, Jimmy Stewart's character and the other actress whose name something Sullivan. Margaret? Margaret Sullivan? Margaret Sullivan. Yeah. Them talking about how great they were so much as it just kind of, they had a bit of contention just while working in the shops and then through the trial maybe they kind of come to love each other Mm. without having the whole writing thing in there because it just was kind of weird. But it did give us the cafe scene which literally inspired you've got me. I know. I found their whole relationship though to be super weird. Yeah. Because they, it's understandable how they were in love with each other over letters, but like the fact that they just hated each other when they worked together, even though like, yeah. they had no reason to think that. Yeah, and even Jimmy's Jimmy Stewart. Uh, what was his name? What was his actual name? I don't want to keep calling him Jimmy Stewart. Uh, <laughs> something with a K too, right? Car? No, not Carl. Was it Frank also? No, I don't remember. Uh, I can always look it up. Um, but like he, I felt like they gave his character a lot of time, right? And they didn't give Margaret's character a lot of time um, for us to get to know him. So you come to know Jimmy Stewart's character a lot more. The shop Shop of the corner. (laughs) Hold on. Around the corner. Oh, wow. This is pretty good on IMDb. Um, Eight eight stars. Uh, But you get to know him and you get to understand where he's coming from even though he's Alfred okay. Alfred okay even though he's flawed whereas Margaret's character is just a brat the entire time and she's trying to pick a fight I know all and the it's time. like why would Alfred's character be in love with this person at the end like she is does nothing nice at all I know. whereas it would be different if she, like she comes to love him through a natural process of seeing him be a good person mm-hmm. Especially for Mr. Mountashek. Yeah. But it was just, it was weird. Yeah, I think Kathleen is much more lovable than yeah. Margaret. And I think, like, we can see Kathleen is pretty kind of quirky mm-hmm. and, like, silly yeah. and stuff. And, like, she's kind of annoying. But you can forgive her because she's, like, she's a little bit of a shrew at times, too. A little aloof. But to be fair, she's losing her business. That was her mom's. That's true. And I did like that decision, in the in the movie that she did lose her business i felt like it put her in an interesting position position i kind of wish they'd explored it more Mm -hmm. like what she was going to do with her life because i felt like they kind of dropped it off there and it's like she's still living life she was writing writing a a children's book book but like they didn't really emphasize that enough for my satisfaction Mm -hmm. it just kind of left that behind and focused on joe and her relationship anywho anywho so for your Overall ratings, we've got four and a half, four and a half, a four, and a three. So that's roughly four. I think it's like right above four. Not yeah. doing the exact math. Would, would you agree with that? If you would I just would, rate yeah. It? Probably okay. like four, 4.5. 4.5? Okay. It's a good movie. Yeah. I, I would give this a three. Um, a three? I, would, I, don't, I don't feel like you actually think that. You don't think I, I actually like think that? I feel like you would give it a four. Mm. No. Maybe three and a half, to be generous. I think you just want me to give it a four. No, I just feel like you enjoyed it more than a three. I did enjoy it, but, like, it's just, I I don't know if I would. Groundhog Day is something I would give 4.5, I think. And then what was another movie you did recently that had a four? Like, um, oh, what was it? Catch Me If You Can, I think. Mm. So this isn't a bad movie. I enjoyed it quite mm-hmm. a bit, and I would wholeheartedly watch it again. I just think there's nothing about it that really... I mean, I think while it'll be memorable to watch, just because mm-hmm. it was fun and I watched it with yeah. you, 
it's just in and of itself. It doesn't necessarily have anything that kind the of razzle dazzle. Yeah, it doesn't have that at least appeals to me in that person. Gotcha. Case. So I'm not I'm not trying to be neg, I promise. <laughs> Um, I'll give it three and a half. I will give it three and a half. I will happily give it three and a half. Okay. If that makes you happy. I'm not, no, I'm not offended. It's fine. <laughs> um, okay. So Tom Hanks is in this movie, obviously. This is the portion where Tom Hanks comes out and sings a silly little song for our enjoyment. Except not really. Um, if Tom Hanks had no, to be another to... actor, he had to be someone else in this movie. In addition to no. Joe. Kathleen's boyfriend. Do you think so? Yes. Hmm. I was thinking. Actually, how about Kathleen herself? I know. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> I feel like it'd be fun if it was like if he did his dad's too. That'd be weird. Sorry, no, dad's. His, his dad and his grim. His best friend, the guy. Mm, nah, I'm not really feeling it. It doesn't really matter in the end. Tom Hanks is in there. We've done a lot of Tom Hanks movies lately. We have. I like Jimmy Stewart. I think he's very good looking for some reason. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Better looking than Tom Hanks by a landslide. You think so? Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me, hold on. Let me Google Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. Oh, no. I'm concerned. Should yeah. I, should you be doing this? Yes. Looks up Jimmy Stewart. He's really attractive. Yeah, I feel like he's good looking. Like, okay, I don't know. I don't think he's like really attractive. He's like attractive in a dorky. Oh, look, look how cute he is! This is an old look man. At him. Like in a dorky way. Mm -hmm. But like, I just kind of like the like salty vibes of him. Do you? Yeah. He looks. He, he reminds me a bit of my my grandpa. Um. All right. So that was that was our take on you've got mail. Uh, thank you all for listening to this. We. Hope that you enjoyed it and are inspired to be um, discussing the movies you're watching more regularly. Um, and until next time, we hope you have good good movie watching. Enjoy a good movie or something like that, that nature. We'll figure out natural one of these days. One day. <laughs> one day.